Isn't the universe big enough for the both of us? Why can't we all just get along? Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at cool tech and science from your favorite movies, video games, books, and comics, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Humans can't be the only life form in the universe, or can we? <laughs> Today, Wired Science writer and Martian expert Jeffrey Marlowe is here to explain the potential of extraterrestrial life. Welcome, Jeff. So you've worked on NASA's Mars Exploration Rovers and Phoenix Mars Lander. What, what, what was that like? That was an amazing experience. Anytime that you have robots at your disposal on the surface of another planet, doing your bidding, doing science is a good day. So what recent findings have really encouraged scientists to continue research for life on Mars? So I think there are, there are two main thrusts of this exciting field. One is what's happening on Mars, the knowledge we're getting of the planet, of the way it used to be. And that's sort of through some of the minerals that we're finding on the surface. These minerals indicate that there was water around. Um, and that's a key aspect of, of life anywhere. The other aspect is what's been happening on Earth and the fact that anywhere on the planet that we go, that there's liquid water and nutrients, there's life. So the fact that there was water on Mars at one point and the fact that anywhere on Earth that there's water, there's life, brings these together and possibly sets the stage for past or present life on Mars. It, it seems like such a slam dunk, but yet we still haven't found definitive Proof. Where are we on this timeline? How, how, how long do you think it'll take before we either conclusively figure it out or conclusively write it off? So that's a, that's a good question. And I think one of the main factors that hasn't really been brought into this debate is, you know, life needs water, it needs nutrients, it needs protection, but the fourth thing it needs is time. And we know that water was around on the surface of Mars. We don't know how long. And we also don't know how long it took for life to evolve on Earth. So that's something that we really don't have a good sense of, and that's something that, that curiosity, with its focus on past habitability on Mars, might be able to answer. Now, going into pop culture a little bit, what's your favorite Martian appearance that you've seen in media, and how accurate was it according to your findings? Um, in general, I'd say not very accurate um, across the board. Um, <laughs> Mars is something that we've, we've always been very excited about. We've often projected our, our own aspirations for alien life on Mars because it's the planet we know best. But I think that, that some of the earlier ideas of, of Martian life in pop culture, things like War of the Worlds or, you know, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli, he was drawing canals across the surface, imagining a whole civilization that was really the seed for all of the science fiction we see today. And because that was wrong, it sort of propagated throughout, leading to crazy scenarios of Martians attacking, you know, the US. <laughs> so giant Martians with huge brains and ray guns are, are probably not in the realm of, of possibility, is what you're saying? That seems very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you give me the inside scoop on what Curiosity has been finding? So right now it's still sort of checking out its, its immediate environment. Um, the first several weeks and months of the mission were all about stretching, stretching the arms, turning the wheels, making sure everything worked out. And it's, it's quite a, a different path from other missions. Phoenix, for example, was 90 days and that was the entire mission. We've already had 90 days and it's only been driving around, testing instruments. Um, so it's a really a much longer scope of the mission. Eventually the goal is to drive up to Mount Sharp and that's where these beautiful rock layers are deposited. And right now it's it's kind of beginning to start that long drive to the to the south toward the mountain. It's taken the scenic route. It is. And it's scenic so far. That's true. There they we've already found um, evidence of flowing water, an ancient riverbed and, and river deposits right where we landed. Um, so it's a good place to be, and hopefully going up the mountain will, will be even more exciting. I, I really hope we find something in our lifetime. I mean, that would just be so phenomenal and so cool. It would be great, and, and I think one of the other interesting questions is how, if we were to discover life beyond Earth, how it's going to happen. I think a lot of people have assumed it's going to be with these missions like Curiosity, going to Mars and looking very physically and close up at the rocks. But we've also seen huge growth in the idea of extrasolar planets. And maybe through remote sensing, if you look at a atmospheric gas in one of these planets, that could tell you a lot about life. So is it going to happen close up with a robot on the ground looking at a cell? Or is it going to happen you know, through millions of light years into another corner of space through spectroscopy? 
Um, I think that's a really interesting question. So Jeff, if you were to give the topic of alien existence, especially on Mars, for example, a fact or a fictional, what would you say it would be? So sadly, at this point, I think it, it's slightly on the fictional side. Oh, you're killing me. OK, all right. Fiction, you are the expert, so I'll take your word for it. But it, it, the whole mission sounds just incredible anyway. So I'm excited that we're getting to see what we are getting to see through all the different missions. Yes, and it's also important to know that, that Curiosity's goal isn't necessarily to find life. It would be amazing, but you know, just setting the stage for was this a happy environment possible for life to have existed um, is the current goal. And we'll leave it to future missions to get on the fine line of that factor fictional question. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Jeff. And where can people follow your work online? Of course. Um, so I, I have a blog on Wired. It's called The Extremo Files with an F. Um, so I write there about extreme life forms on Earth, the possibility of life elsewhere. Um, and I've also been writing for the, the Mars Curiosity mission. So you can look through, through that site for the work there. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Tell me your favorite alien film. Why can't we all just get along? The person with the best video response will see themselves on a future episode. Until next week, I'm Veronica Belmont, and this is Factor Fictional on Tech Feed. Be sure to subscribe to see all of our brand new fantastic shows. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and also, we are doing a bit of rescheduling over here at Tech Feed, so Factor Fictional will now be airing every Friday from here on out. Thanks to everyone for their loyal viewership and sticking with me during the evolution of this show. I'll see you next Friday, January 25th. We've seen jetpacks in cinema, comics, and video games for years now. It's one of the most desired things in technology for people for the future. Where do we currently stand with this technology? It's one of those things that it's not against any laws of nature or anything like that. It's not like time travel or warp drive or uh, any of those other completely crazy ideas. You can build a jetpack. It's just it turns out not to be the best way to get around.